Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This uh, particular session uh, about the uh, leadership uh, uh, pipeline, we will be discussing with you the competency model, leadership pipeline, leadership pipeline model, uh, potential and performance metrics, uh, five leadership pipeline mistakes, uh, rules for developing the leadership uh, pipeline and as usual we will discussing the research papers, case studies and book recommendations on this particular topic is there. So, whenever we are talking about the competency model that is the Hogan and the Werenfeld's domain model and this competency model uh, describes the behavior and skills. Now, what is the most important is that, that whenever we are talking about the uh, attitude, behavior and cognitive uh, dissonance which we have talked earlier that is the mental uh, uh, attitude a state of mind and therefore, in that case uh, this competency model is uh, mostly focus on this the behavior that how should be the behavior and the, what are the skills are needed for organizational success. And all organizational competency models uh, fall into one of four major categories uh, uh, as we have talked about the interpersonal skills and uh, second is the intrapersonal skill is there. So, at workplace it is very, very important to put oneself in the position of another person and see that is if this behavior is done by others with me what will be my reaction or feelings. And uh, uh, others uh, uh, fulfillment uh, accurately perceive the expectations of others right and incorporate the information about other persons expectations are there. Similarly, intrapersonal is there. So, the uh, within it is the individuals within that is the what core competency do I have right what are the my liking for self and that is called the self esteem. So, if your self esteem is very high then in that case definitely we will be able uh, to develop uh, our uh, uh, the competency and behavior and skills uh, uh, at the workplace because we like ourselves. Technical skills are there, business skills and work skills are there. So, these technical skills differ from the intrapersonal and interpersonal skills in that they are the last to develop hmm, to the easier to teach because they are more most of the that is especially um, with uh, the running of the machine physical teaching is there the most cognitive and uh, the least dependent upon dealing with the other people is there. So, here it is about to yourself only this is very very important at the uh, organization we are have to interact with the others while in the technical skills it is our own is there and the fourth one which is most important is that is the leadership skills are there. So, if we are skills and talent ability to recruit talented people, uh, second is one must be able to retain talent, it has been the recruited must be able to motivate a team and fourth effective leaders are the able to develop and promote a vision for the team right. And finally, leadership skill involves being persistence and hard to discourage. Right. So, therefore, in that case uh, all these uh, skills which we are talking about the of the five components is there identifying the talent right that is a very, very big challenge is there uh, like how to identify the CEO in the class. So, once you are able to find identify the CEO in the class you will be uh, then you, you are supposed to get work done from them that is the retention retention will be the another issue that is the, the leadership skills required that is the good people should be remaining with you only. Uh, now, on the basis of these uh, skills uh, when we talk about the, the intrapersonal skills, interpersonal skills, uh, technical skills is there and the leadership skills are there then we talk about the pipeline with the help of these skills right. So, a systematic visible system of identifying the employees for succession this is pipeline means what that is the if the, the who is at the leadership position number one 
then you will be able to replace the position number 2 and that is called succession. So, combined with the process for their development is there. So, always whenever we are developing the employees, we are not developing the employees only for the current positions, we are developing the employees for the next level also and that, that is called the succession planning is there and there this leadership pipeline has to be used. So, organizations are having the prepared the leaders and not just a list of prospective candidates across the all organization is there and this, this uh, succession planning basically developing the people for the next level, it is not only at the top level, only middle level or at the junior level. This particular planning is done for the all the levels right from the junior, middle and the top level is there. So, building the leaders at every level a leadership pipeline the um, shows where leaders should spend time, what behaviors they need to exhibit and what challenges are likely at different organizational levels. So, there are three levels basically the lower level, middle level and the top level is there. So, every level that will require the time is spending the time right. So, therefore, in that case uh, whenever we are talking, uh, but here I want to say uh, also mention that is the uh, the, uh, the models of, uh, suggest that is the leadership is time time on leadership is spent more at the junior level as compared to the top level is there. And uh, definitely at every level there will be the different challenges are there. It outlines leader development through organizational levels from the first line supervisor to functional manager to CEO right. So, therefore, right from the first line supervisor as I was mentioning about the junior level or the immediate supervisor level from to the workers level, workers supervisor to the workers or the shift supervisors we can say. So, these shift supervisors uh, uh, from the that level that leadership style to the top level management of the CEO is his concern. The pipeline offers a roadmap for individual who want to chart their career progression right and therefore, in that case it, it, it will be always be having this uh, roadmap for the individual is there and how it will be roadmap that is the first and foremost is manage the self and self management is the best management and for that purpose the leader is required to be highly motivated and when he is able to manage the self properly with that uh, all these uh, 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 with his own habits, uh, attitude, knowledge level if he is managing then definitely then he will reach to, to manage the others are there. If his knowledge level is not uh, at a higher level how he will manage to the others. When you are managing the others manage of managers is there that is the uh, how we can manage the managers because that will require fundamentally more uh, absorptions and the functional managers are there and these functional managers will be converted into the business manager then um, it will be the group uh, group manager is there and the, then there will be the enterprise manager is there. So, building the leaders at every level right from the managing the self as a leader to the enterprise level uh, manager or the leaders are required is there. All, all this will be possible only when you are developing right from the beginning of the joining of the organization of the employee. If then the employee is joining from this uh, uh, in beginning of the, in the organization then definitely he will be able to learn and understand the culture of the organization. When he learns and understand the culture of the organization, he will be able to managing the self to managing others is there. So, first time managers need to learn how to reallocate their time, so that they not only complete their assigned work, but also help others to perform effectively. So, time management in managing self, the time management is becoming the most important thing is there. And uh, whenever when a person is able to manage himself uh, uh, with the time then must shift from the doing work to getting work done through others right then he will be able to get the work done through the others is there and this is especially difficult for the first time managers are there those who are the newly entered uh, into the managerial uh, level for them this is becoming a, a, a typical issue. Part of the problem is that they still prefer to spend time on their old work right even as they take charge of a group yet the pressure to spend less time on the individual work and more time on managing will increase at each passage. So, irrespective of the level whether it is a junior level, middle level or the top level is there that is the individual has to manage uh, and it will be increasing at the with the passage time it will be increasing.
A people do not start making changes in how they allocate their time from the beginning, they are bound to become liabilities as they move up. So, therefore, in that case if uh, in, in the beginning if they are not uh, making the changes, they are not developing their self, then definitely they will bound, bound to develop others and develop themselves in the later stages there. In the passage 2, whenever we are talking about the managing others to the managing managers, uh, they need to be able to identify value based resistance to managerial work, a common reaction among the first line managers is there. And therefore, in that case, uh, this value based resistance to the managerial work will be done uh, and uh, a common reaction will be there amongst the first line managers are there. And these first line managers uh, who are uh, uh, leading from the front, uh, right. So, therefore, a common reaction is uh, expected uh, uh, at this level is there. They need to recognize that the software designer who would rather design software than manage others cannot be allowed to move up to a leadership role no matter how brilliant he or she might be at designing software and the individual will block the leadership pipeline if he or she does not derive satisfaction from managing and leading people. This is a very very important point for those those who think that is uh, I am very good in the my work, so I will be the leader, it is not so. Because the leadership uh, style requires to manage others also. So, if you might be excellent in your uh, job but it will not give you leadership positions because the leader requires to work with others, leader requires to develop others, leader requires to have team effectiveness, leader requires to take the people along with him, only then he will be in the leadership position. But if he is not moving to the leadership position, he will block the mess, uh, that particular passage. That, that is, uh, so what you have to learn is, that is in addition to your technical skills, you might be very expert in uh, your technical skills, but whenever the in the organization, whenever the leadership positions are considered, it is also has been seen whether people is able to get uh, work done with the others or not. Succeeding in the third leadership passage also requires the increased managerial maturity and in one says maturity means thinking and acting like a functional leader rather than a functional member. Right, and therefore it is the you know, very very important. You you are you are the part of the organization. But it also means that managers need to adopt a broad long term perspective, long term strategies, especially applied to their own function. Is usually what gives up the most managers trouble at this stage, and therefore designing the strategy, long term goals, long term planning, it is not that easy, which which creates the problem. Effective leadership enters creating a functional strategy that enables them to do something better than the competition. So, it is not only that is about the competition of the performance, but rather, rather than better than that. And whether it is coming up with a method to design more innovative products or the reach new customer groups, uh, these managers must push the functional envelope is there. Uh, this passage represents a short term. Uh, managers to the business managers. Now, here the passage is having the different approach. A major shift in skills, time application and work values must take place. And this is not simply a matter of thinking more strategically, rather than consider the feasibility of an activity, a business manager must examine it from a short and long term profit perspective. So, therefore, in that case uh, the, these uh, people who have only been in one function their entire careers the position of business manager represents unexplored territory. Because whenever you are talking about the functional manager to a business manager. So, uh, example is the production manager is there, production manager may be excellent, uh, but when he will become the head of the all the business whether he will be able to handle the business or not that is a different trick. So, not only do they have to learn and manage different functions, but they also need to become skilled at working with a wider variety of people uh, than the ever before. They need to become more sensitive to the functional diversity issues and able to communicate clearly and effectively. So, therefore, in that case if the manager is uh, uh, able to communicate uh, with the others uh, very clearly and effectively, then definitely in that case he will be more successful. Uh, business managers to the group manager. Uh, so, a business manager values the success of his own business, a group manager values the success of other people's business. Uh, 
wonderful uh, definition. So, all business managers may not be necessarily the group managers, right? Because uh, they, they may, may have these uh, ability to perform their business in the best way, but they may not have the ability to perform as a leading the group manager is there. A critical because some people derive satisfaction only when they are the ones receiving the lion's share of the credit. As we might uh, imagine that is a group manager who does not value the success of others will fail to inspire and support the business managers who report to him and therefore, in that case uh, uh, he might be getting the results in production and productivity, but he will be failing to lead the business managers. So, group managers must master four skills, evaluate the strategy in order to allocate and deploy capital develop business managers, develop and implement a portfolio strategy, assess whether they have the right core capabilities to win or not. And therefore, uh, this particular the uh, SHRM strategic of the human resource management right from the evaluating the strategy is there and till the core capabilities to win then these all these business managers uh, to the group managers uh, they are required to design this such leadership uh, pipeline so that they are becoming the more and more successful. The group managers to the enterprise managers finally, the transition during the six passage is such more focused on values uh, than the skills right and there, therefore, now you see as we are growing up in the passages you will find that is the HR skills are becoming more important. Working with these uh, um, group people is more important than only having the expertise in your technical skills. To an even greater extent than all the previous level people must reinvent themselves in enterprise managers. They must set direction and develop operating mechanisms to know and drive quarter by quarter performance that is in tune with the longer term strategy is there. So, enterprise leaders need to come to terms with the fact that their performance as a CEO will be based on the three or four high impact decisions each each year right and therefore in that case the whatever is your performance as a ceo is there so that that, that will be the uh, reflecting reflecting in the terms that is the uh, high high impact decisions which you are taking in the uh, um, period of time of maybe from the 3 years, 4 years or 5 years. So, this will be the high impact decisions are becoming very, very important. There is a subtle but fundamental shift in responsibility from the strategic to the visionary uh, making is there and therefore, in that case that is uh, ma making the leaders uh, uh, from this uh, uh, right, right from the managing self to the enterprise manager a, a, a complete pipeline will be developed a visionary pipeline will be developed. By establishing appropriate requirements uh, for the six leadership levels, companies can greatly facilitate succession planning and leadership development and selection process in their organization. Individual managers can clearly see the gap between their current performance and the desired performance. They can also see the gaps in their training and experience and where they may have the skipped a passage or the parts of a passage and how that is the hurting their performance is there. So, leadership passages provide companies with a way to improve selection uh, rather than basing their selection uh, decisions on the past performance alone. Personal connections are the preferences, managers can be held to a higher or more effective standards are there. So, always whenever we are talking about uh, decision on the past performance is there, then all, uh, this, this, uh, the preferences of the manager right that, that is very, very important right. So, if you are if uh, your preference is for the quality, if your preference is for the high standard then definitely in that case your direction of the leadership will be towards that goal which will be organizing and creating a vision of the high quality or the high standard is there. A defined pipeline provides the organization with a diagnostic tool and that helps them to identify uh, mismatches between individuals capabilities and their leadership level is there. So, it, it is becoming very, very important that is whatever the individuals capabilities are there then their leadership level that will decide about uh, this partic particular development of the pipeline is there. Therefore, remedying the situation or if necessary removing the mismatch person which is more likely is there. 
Uh, it helps uh, organizations move people through leadership passages at the right speed. People who tick punch, uh, punch their way through job and uh, do not absorb the necessary work values and skills are there. The pipeline provides a system for identifying when someone is ready to move to the next leadership level. It reduces the time needed to prepare an individual for the top leadership position uh, in a large corporation. And uh, it, it is always important that is the, uh, the leadership and, uh, effectively and timely it is to be done. So, therefore, that pipeline uh, leadership development is there and especially in the large organization that, that has to be initiated at the right time. Because the pipeline clearly defines what is needed to move from one level to the next, uh, that is the little or no wasted time on jobs that merely duplicate the skills is there. So, whole focus is on developing this pipeline is that, that is the you are developing that pipeline on leadership uh, timely. So, whenever the, uh, so what is the right time? The right time is when the person enters into the organization. As soon as the person enters into the organization, there should be this pipeline leadership development that should start. Now, here we will uh, see that is the how uh, this particular uh, uh, pipeline potential performance matrix it works uh, uh, right from this the, uh, this, uh, from the first level uh, to the, nine, uh, uh, the, the that is the developing the full mastery is there. So, sustain the performance on the x axis uh, and therefore, exceptional performance, uh, full performance and not yet full performance is there and when that we are talking about the potential. So, uh, therefore, in that case that is the mastery potential, then there will be the growth potential and there will be the turn potential will be there. So, whenever we are talking about the exceptional performance and uh, able to work at the next level in 3 or 5 years or sooner. Right, so that will be the exceptional turn will be there. Right, So, there in that case it is the move to the next passenger high leadership layer move now. So, therefore, the decision will be the move now is there. So, and in the point number 9, when we are talking about not yet full performance is there, right, and then, then mastery potential able to do the same kind of work only better. Hmm? So, therefore, in that case, that will be the underperformer will be there. So, we, we have to see that is the uh, high performer, hmm? underperformer, the performer is uh, ok. This is a potential, high performer with a potential and uh, performance uh, with the potential is there and then the not yet a full growth uh, potential performer, performance parts of the job are there. So, therefore, potential performer is there right and uh, potential talent not yet a full turn is there right therefore, it is there and the talent is, is there. Now, the what is the very important is this that is the uh, uh, we have to develop uh, uh, that exceptional talent and uh, identify identifying the right person and developing that particular person uh, with, with the next level you know, and that is the immediately you will move now for the next level is there. Hmm? That is the uh, where, where the leaders have to uh, keep their eye and they have to watch on it. However, uh, this, this, this potential, na? this potential So, therefore, in that case uh, yes and this can be focused and this leadership will be focused on this potential employees and to reach to the exceptional performer is there. Ultimately, what is the goal? Goal is to develop the exceptional performer and whenever we are having the exceptional performer uh, development. So, we have to identify the potential, we have to develop the employees uh, on those who are talented and uh, when we are mixing this talent and timely. That, that you please do not forget. So, where leadership fails to do this? So, not building from the bottom up. Hmm? So, when we built our pipeline, we had the spots labeled and through through, but when we started filling out the pipeline, we put people in place too fast and we knew we needed more leaders, but we promoted people too fast is there. So, therefore, in that case, uh, even we know that is the, uh, uh, there is a more needed, but what we do? 
we promote the people too fast is there and then, then, then that type of the mistake is to be avoided. So, uh, too many skills and expectations are there leading uh, listing the different skills and expectations is to be successful at each level we made the mistake of having a too many where too many right. So, therefore, yes we require the knowledge of certain skills and therefore, we also having certain expectations, but our expectations are beyond the limit right. And we are expecting the skills which are not possible that much uh, uh, for the uh, uh, getting the talent for our organization. So, therefore, we have to also understand our organization and the skills and talent required, but if we are not able to identify that skills and talent that will be the mistake. Not resourcing the coaches enough right. So, the second leadership transition in the pipeline is the most difficult. In this transition a leader goes from leading others to the leading leaders right and they, they, there is a shift in values from doing ministry to getting ministry done through the others is there. So, leader also has to shift where they see their greatest impact on the ministry before the impact was found in their individual task, but how and their greatest impact is found in the relationship of those they lead. So, therefore, in that case it, it is always it is always between the task and relationship is important. So, whenever you are having the task and the relationship you, you have to develop a balance between that. Uh, here those who are the on board right training new leaders, but we did almost uh, uh, no training once they were on the team ongoing is there right. So, therefore, in that case at the time of the onboarding yes we focus on their development of the leaders is there, but when we are focus on that is uh, they were on the team uh, how, how they are performing with the team members then we are not having the any control over them and as a result of which what happens that is even they have boarded, boarded means take off. So, they have taken the uh, take off uh, uh, with the right uh, speed, but they are not able to reach to the high positions right then so it is it is because of this particular mistake. So, not building the future development into the pipeline at first we were focused on quality control uh, building invest to ensure that each ministry would be run well in our absence right. So, ministry in that staff and the people those who are working under their particular leader after a few years we had built a system that had a high bar of execution, but we were not responding uh, reproducing the leaders right. So, therefore, bars have been raised the requirements have been raised, but we are not able to produce we were doing things well, but our leaders were burning out. So, we had to tweak uh, our pipeline is there and therefore, in that case whatever the leaders you were developing and that leaders were performing at the up to certain extent, but at the period of time changes then definitely the new scale new knowledge that has to be developed and there our leaders were burning out is there. If the leaders are burning out then definitely there will not be a succession planning, there will be no successor, there is no any other person who can carry out this particular uh, uh, the situation. So, we had to tweak uh, our pipe pipeline and on basis of this uh, pipeline we will be able to develop. Rules for developing the leadership pipeline the HBR study the five rules for setting up a succession management system that will will a steady reliable pipeline of leadership talent uh, uh, rule one focus on development the fundamental rule and uh, the one on which the other four rest is that succession management must be a flexible system oriented towards the development activities and not a rigid list of the high potential employees and the slots they might fill. So, by uh, making the succession planning and the leadership development this is very very important that is our objective is the leadership development then we have to carry the succession planning for this particular objective and uh, you will you get the best of both. Uh, so, therefore, as we are taking care of uh, the our organizational level. So, we are getting the best of both attention to the skills required for senior management positions along with an educational system that can help managers develop those skills are there. So, uh, here the managers are working since long they are system oriented their development activities are there and when we are putting uh, putting them into an educational system then definitely in that case manager with that education level they will develop themselves are there. If the education system is for the leadership development right or maybe the management courses or uh, maybe the team building effectiveness is there then definitely in that case we will find that is we are able to develop the leaders. 
identify the uh, linchpin positions, succession management means developing the leaders pipeline whatever we say the pipeline uh, then that is about the uh, developing the leaders at the succession management should focus intensively on the uh, linchpin positions jobs that are essential to the long term health of the organization. They are typically difficult to fill because in the organization they are working since long and they, they, they want to create that environment. So, therefore, it is very very important that is the they are they, they is, uh, always the organizations are focusing on the long term objectives with this type of the leaders. They are typically difficult to fill, these positions are difficult to fill and rarely individual contributor positions are there and they usually resides in established areas of business those critical for the future. Rule 3 is make it transparent, right from the beginning in the leadership we are talking about uh, the democracy, we are talking about the participation, we are talking about the transparency. So, here also it is making the rule 3, a transparent succession management system is not just about being honest. Hmm. Employees are often the best source of information about themselves, so self-awareness and their skills and experiences and if they know what they need to do to reach a particular rung on the ladder, they can take steps to the do just that. So, therefore, they are well aware about their competency. Rule 4 is the measure the progress regularly, when you meld leadership development and succession planning then thus move away from the replacement mindset of the past measuring success becomes a long term matter. So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, once we, uh, we are matching with these uh, succession planning and the development leaders are there then now our mind minds should be little bit away because we have to just observe managing success becomes a long term matter and no longer is it sufficient to know who could replace the CEO and instead you must know whether the right people are moving at the right pace into the right jobs at the right time is there and if it is done then definitely we will be more successful. Keep it flexible, In old fashioned succession planning is fairly rigid right, people do not move on and off the list fluidly. So, therefore, if somebody is in the production he will not go into the administration as such very easily. By contrast the best practice organizations we studied follow the Japanese notion of Kaizen of continuous improvement in both processes and content. They refine and adjust their systems on the basis of feedback from line executives and the participants, monitor developments in the technology and learn from other leading organizations are there. And this is the basically that is the peer learning is very very important is there and uh, these li line managers they have to follow uh, these particular aspects. So, this is the leadership competencies across organizational level a test of the pipeline model this is the research paper which normally we talk you can refer this particular paper and uh, the to, uh, relative importance of competencies increases as the organizational hierarchy distances between the two positions increases is there. So, practical implications are succession system this uh, how they have made the use of this particular research and they will talk about that knowing how people develop certainly with help organizations in designing their succession system is there. This is the uh, case study about the Indra Nui right that is the CEO of the Pepsi, Pepsi companies has become that leader uh, the leading organization under the dynamic leadership of Indra Nui. So, this case study you can refer and you can find that how Indra Nui that she has developed uh, the organization and the leadership in the organization is there. This is a book the leadership pipeline how to build the leadership powered company and this is a specific book which is uh, which can be referred these are the references and this is all about uh, what is about the leadership pipeline is there. Thank you.